Lesson 11-1 is accounting for purchases transactions using a general journal. The learning objects, objectives are to explain the purpose of the general journal, look at the account for purchases return allowance, and post a general journal to the accounts payable ledger and to the general ledger. Not every transaction can be recorded in a special journal, such as these special journals that we have recorded so far. For example, when Three Green buys store supplies on account, the transactions result in a debit to supplies and a credit to accounts payable. The transaction is not a cash payment, so it can't be recorded in the cash payments journal, nor is a transaction a purchase on, of merchandise on account, so it can't be recorded in the purchase journal. Transactions that cannot be recorded in a general journal are recorded, or sorry, Transactions that are not recorded in a special journal are recorded in a general journal. And a journal with two amount columns in which all kinds of transactions can be recorded is a general journal. And this is what we'll take a look at this chapter and add it to our other four journals. Three Green receives an invoice from a vendor when it buys store supplies on account. A pre-numbered memorandum is attached to the invoice, noting that it is for store supplies and not for purchases. This is, this is done to ensure that the invoice gets paid and recorded correctly. Again, it's supplies. If we were buying purchases, that would be a purchase invoice. We're going to take a look at the first transaction, buying supplies on account. Bought store supplies on account from Estes Supplies, $165.25, and a memorandum was filled out. When store supplies were bought on account, both the value of store supplies on hand and the amount to the vendor is increased. Okay, so we're going to take this information and we are going to journalize it in our general journal. Again, it's buying store supplies on, a, on account, so we did not pay cash, we did not receive cash, we did not buy per merchandise on account, or we didn't sell anything, so it goes in our general journal. Steps, the date, we write out the account title, memorandum, and the debit amount. That takes care of our store supplies. Then our accounts, pay our accounts payable, we have to not only write accounts payable because it has to go to our controlling account we also have to identify the vendor okay and it is separated by a diagonal line not a hyphen but a diagonal line okay so you take a look at that you also write draw a diagonal line in your post reference because as you will see in a few minutes we will be posting not only to our controlling account, but we have to keep our vendor's account up to date also. So we'll draw a diagonal line there. So anytime you do it here, you do it there. And then we'll write our credit amount right there in the credit column. Customers generally do not want to keep merchandise that is inferior in quality, different from what they ordered, or damaged when it's received. If that happens, a customer may be allowed to return part or all of the merchandise purchased. Credit allowed for the purchase price of returned merchandise, resulting in a decrease in the customer's accounts payable to the vendor, is called a purchase return. When merchandise is damaged but still usable, or it is of different quality than ordered, the vendor may let the customer keep the merchandise at a reduced price. Credit allowed for part of the purchase price of merchandise that is not returned, resulting in a decrease in the customer's accounts payable count is called a purchase allowance. A purchase return and allowance should be confirmed in writing. A form prepared by the customer showing the price deduction taken by the customer for a return or allowance is called a debit memorandum. The form is called a debit memorandum because the customer records the amount as a debit to the vendor's account. The result is a decrease in the amount owed. 
The customer may use a debit memorandum as a source document for journalizing a purchase return or allowance, or the customer might wait for a written confirmation from the vendor and use a confirmation as a source. Three Green issues a debit memorandum for each purchase return or allowance. These debit memorandums are used as source documents for purchase return and allowances. Using debit memorandums make it possible for these transactions to be recorded immediately without waiting for written confirmation from the vendors. The original of each debit memorandum is sent to the vendor and three green files a copy for its record. A business could credit purchases for the amount of purchase return and allowance. However, better information is provided if these amounts are credited to a separate account called purchase return and allowance. This allows businesses to track the amount of purchase return and allowance in a fiscal period and makes it possible to evaluate the efficiency of its purchasing activities. Merchandise returns and, returns and purchases allowance decrease the total value of merchandise purchased. Purchase, return, and allowance is a contra account to purchases. Thus, the normal balance of purchases is, the normal balance that we know as purchases is debit. Purchase, return, allowance is a contra account to purchase, so the normal balance would be a credit. Contra being opposite of the normal, so it's going to reduce the related account. So you're going to record all of your merchandise that you purchased in your purchase account. If you return some, you're going to keep it in a separate account. And eventually, it's going to reduce the amount of our purchases. Both purchases and purchase return and allowance are listed in the cost of goods sold division of Three Greens chart of accounts. If you look at this, we've already taken a look at purchases and purchase discount. Our purchase return allowance also falls under the category cost of goods sold. Journalizing purchase return allowance. Here's an example of the transaction. Return merchandise to Mobley Tools, $43. Covering purchase invoice, $528. And you're going to prepare a debit memorandum. It just shows that in purchase... Uh, the purchase invoice will show that you purchased that merchandise and you're returning part of it. Okay, so your accounts payable and your purchase return allowance accounts are going to be affected. Accounts payable, the amount that you will pay your vendor at a future date is going to decrease because you return some of the merchandise and purchase return and allowance is going to go up. The total amount of merchandise that you have returned. Okay, to record this in your journal, we write the date, our accounts payable. Remember, any time we write our accounts payable controlling account, account, we also have to identify our vendor, so we bring that account up to date. And then we write our debit memorandum. We write the diagonal line because we have to post to both accounts payable, <clears throat> excuse me, and our vendor. We write the debit amount, account title, and the credit amount. Then we'll go on to posting. Transactions recorded in the general journal can affect both the general ledger and the subsidiary ledger. Okay, so again, buying supplies on account, for example, can result as a debit to the general ledger supplies, and it's also going to affect the accounts payable account, SD supplies. In a computerized system, system, it would be done automatically. Your posting would be done immediately. In manual accounting, general journal transactions may be posted immediately at the end of the day or less frequently. So again, you have to decide on your posting method that you want to do and how often you want to do it. You want to make sure it's pretty often so that your accounts payable or your vendor's accounts are up to date. So let's just take a look at this. We're going to post the date, journal page number, credit, and now all they're doing is they're posting to the accounts payable ledger. You will notice as soon as you post 
to your, oops, as soon as you post to your accounts, you write the account, this 220 goes along with this vendor. Posting to the general, again, it's the same. You write the date, journal page number, your debit amount, and your credit amount, and your vendor number. And by looking at this, you will see that it's posted twice, once to accounts payable and once to your vendor.